So our objective today is to challenge a muscle, not necessarily to move weight. So what we're thinking about is um, literally, simply, what does a muscle do? A muscle only moves one end closer to another. Every muscle has two ends, one's the origin, one's the insertion. We're literally trying to bring this end of the muscle closer to this end. And then doing our most effective uh, way of adding load to that and adding resistance to that. That's it, challenge a muscle, not uh, an exercise. And what you want to acknowledge, you've got a great chest, but what you want to acknowledge is everyone's got a different sternal angle. So, you know, my stern tends to sit a little more uh, up like this. Some people have a very stat, fat, yeah, flat like this. sternal angle. Well, so that's going to play a role in how you set up for this exercise, right? So the ideal scenario is I want to have all this muscle lining up to move this weight. So all this muscle that sits down here against this pec, if he lays down in a bench press, I want to make sure all this is in line to move is in line to move the weight. So if I'm laying on a bench press, and the reason body or powerlifters do this is now they're putting all this pec in direct alignment to move that weight. Whereas if I'm this way, now the pec wants to more move in this plane. Mm. See the difference? Yeah. So individual variances plays a big plays a big role. Um, so you guys don't have one that goes decline, but most of us are going to have to use a slight decline to get the greatest amount of pec recruitment. Let's just, let's just go and we'll, I'll manipulate yeah. your... You could put a little thing underneath thing it underneath. or, 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 uh, or, well, that, that's a decline, but that's a padded thing. God, I'll, I'll but, just watch it, man. I want to see yeah. what you're doing and see what, see what it looks like. So yeah. let's, let's get it after you. What you want me to do? Just push the metal press. All right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of times I'll start with a barbell, being a power lifter. A lot of times we don't start with dumbbells. But. So are you still trying to attach to continue to do the power lifting, or are you going to do a little more bodybuilding style training? Uh, yeah, I mean, I like, I like power lifting, but um, I'm not going to compete in it anymore. So... I'm just uh, right now. I mean, just I'm just moving around, uh, but aesthetically, I'd like to continue to work on getting better. So, first thing you can do, and you can manipulate this, but just understanding it, taking your elbow here is mm -hmm. going to completely take the pec out of the movement. Okay. So, as the more I drop the elbow down, the less pec I'm going to I'm going to be training. Gotcha. The more I keep the elbow up, the more pec I'm going to be training. So, it's it's a choice. Right. Um, but if you're trying to do more pec, then the first manipulation is getting those elbows back up. Got it. I can explain why if you want to like if you want yeah, to see yeah. it. Yeah. So when Chris goes, I'll show you. Yeah. I've done that for years, um, partially due to the fact that you know everything I've done has been this way, and so I'm like, well, most of the time when I do dumbbells, why not just do them this way? Mm -hmm. So well, so from a powerlifting perspective, from a perspective of me just trying to keep things, changing things up, hit things from different angles. So thinking about this, if, my, if, that, if I do that, here's my pec, mm -hmm. come up and follow it. That's, that's the insertion end of my pec, this is the origin end of my pec. If I go like this, and I put my arm down, now the insertion's way down here, does that make sense? Yeah. So if I, if I just follow it up, that's the insertion of my pec. I see. Now yeah, it's down here. So all, all the all muscles do is it pulls one end closer to the other, right? So now I'm, if, if I'm trying to pull my insertion, to the, so if I keep my finger there, pull the insertion closer to this origin, it literally can't because it would have to go around the corner. So if I want to try to make this pec a primary mover, muscles can only contract in straight lines, right? If these things are muscle fibers just pull in a straight line, you guys you can imagine what like a shredded chest would look like in a straight line. So as soon as I put that arm down, now this pec fiber really only does, that's really the only movement it can, it can execute. So it's really going to be training you know, these two it would effectively be contracting between these two points, whereas this isn't actually contracting actively to support the motion. Gotcha. Um,
lot of uh, power through movements we try to, you know, oftentimes try to avoid getting the muscles to almost stretch like that, you know what I mean? And so I, it's been uncommon for me to train that way or for me to really mess with uh, much <clears throat> lifting that's like that. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that most people in, in bodybuilding training don't consider is distance. And that's the most important thing you start to manipulate, right? And here's the, the easiest way to understand distance. If I have a 10 pound dumbbell and I hold it here, how long can I hold it? Probably forever. Yeah. If, if I go here, how long can I hold it? <laughs> a little bit less. And now, but if I go here, a lot less. A lot less. What, it, what changed? So the same dumbbell, distance changed. So distance is half of the equation of, of tension, of torque. So people are, are doing dumbbell presses and they're here and they do a hundred pound dumbbell and they do it 10 times and they go 110, 10 pound, or 10 pound increase, 10% increase, and they come in by anything more than 10%, they're actually doing less work on their pec. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I want to manipulate from a hundred pounds, instead of going to 110, maybe I'll just go hundred pounds and I'll go here. And I increase by 10% distance, I'm doing 10% more work to this muscle, right? Based on the whole distance equation. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge factor that people aren't manipulating, man. So you, when you're pressing, you're very much in here. Yeah. If your hands are directly over your shoulder, your pec isn't doing any work. So by just taking it a little bit further away, you're gonna sub subject your pec to way more load. Top. I'm gonna show you like a normal press. Like if I try to come in like this, I, can, I, I can't really come in because this, it okay, so let's do this. Let's realize that the pec doesn't cross the elbow joint, it crosses the shoulder joint. So I just want to do this. So I want my elbows to come across my body, not my hands. So if I keep my hands directly outside of my elbows the entire time. Say that again? About your pec? What did you say? It crosses well, my the pec doesn't the cross the elbow joint, it crosses the shoulder joint. Gotcha. So okay. I just want to influence okay. this joint. So the motion should be this. <clears throat> so if I can just make that the motion without consideration of this, I want, it, I want this to move. So the idea there is now, how do I keep my elbows inside of my hands the whole time? Think about that, Chris. Take your hands right slightly outside of your elbows. Take my hands. Slightly outside of your elbows. Come to the bottom and stop. Just a little bit. That's, that's, yeah, that's way too much. Yeah. Just a little bit. There. Like that? Yep, and now try to keep the hands outside the elbows. Yep. And uh, are you trying to keep the dumbbells almost a little bit outside your shoulders even? Yes. <laughs> yep. So it doesn't matter that I'm not touching them in the middle. Not at all. Because that's actually been my issue, is like because of the tear, it's yep. been hard. But this actually feels a lot better. So now, good. Now think about stretch. <clears throat> really stable base. Stop right at the bottom. Pull your shoulder blades together in the middle. Yeah, there you go. Hold that. So we can create a really stable base. We can get those pecs to do some work. It feels completely different than it was. Yeah, great. Every time you come to the bottom, reset, like just a little further up. Tight abs, tight back. Squeeze it toward you, squeeze your back. Try not to fart. There you go. It feels like so much, uh, so much more work where you're not, yeah, you're using no weight, but now it actually feels like I'm getting work in that. That's the idea, yeah. 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 Um, there was no impact on that, which usually I'm smack, you know, so grabbing as heavy a way as I can here and bouncing it right. You can hold it all day. And same thing here, I can hold it there all day. So if I finish the rep there, now so that still work for me. Yeah. If I come here, rest. Pull your back, to, uh, shoulder blades together at the back. Yeah. That stretch feels good. It's crazy how much different it does feel. If you watch Chris, you can literally watch his pec insertion come from right here and watch it move. Wherever it moves to, that's what's going to be getting the most work. So this is a flat bench press, it's working his upper chest. So it's coming from there, as, as this part moves, it's moving to there. So it's literally, if you drew a straight line, it's going to be working this primarily. So just because it's a flat bench press doesn't mean it's not working his upper chest. 
Yeah, I mean, I usually like to stay in, in the lower rep ranges, like six. Okay. But uh, just making sure the form yeah. is on point first. Blood gets to the area that way. Right, just objectively watching. What his insertion does. So there's his insertion, watch it across the body. It's kind of pulling still an upper chest exercise primarily. It's hitting a little bit down here. That's going to hit a good amount of overall chest fibers. Try a complete stop at the bottom here. Stop, squeeze the pecs, but don't move, contract them. Now push through that. Push through that. There you go. Oh. Okay. Squeeze. Get a little wider with those hands and push through it. Yep. Stop. Straight tension in the back. Squeeze the pecs, push through it. Yep. Squeeze the pecs hard and push through. I mean, I usually just kind of go back and forth with whoever I'm training with, or if I'm training by myself, I never sit still, man. I'm always picking two body parts, and I'm. Oh, you like yeah, stuff back and forth. Yeah, I just don't like sitting around, man. Time, right? Efficiency. Yeah. So. Do you usually pair up chest with like back or something? Or biceps. Biceps, yeah. Something that's not competitive. Uh, back I usually do on its own, or with triceps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always something, or it's abs, or it's calves, or it's. You know, cardio in between or something. Because yeah. you can get, I mean, you can you can rest a little less, still put a lot of power and efficiency into each yeah. set, and o your overall time that you're training. Like and it's not competitive training. exercises. Right. Stay wide, wide first. Yep, there you go. Contract and push. That's it. Contract and push. Yep, beautiful man. Stabilize the base. Push through. Stabilize the back, push through. Ben. Squeeze there and push through. There you go. Bell lots, man. I got you. I got you. Stay strong. Drive it. Good. I got you. Go again. Good three. Come on. Strong. Stay Good. wide now. Drive into the bench. One more. Strong.
Hey, what's up guys? Just wrapped up a chest training session here at Super Training Gym with Mark and Chris Bell. Been following these guys for years. Absolutely love the attitude around fitness and now their evolution into ultimately living a healthy, long life. So grateful to come in here and be able to train. Had a nice, fun, easy chest workout, contracted some muscles, uh, tested out the slingshot. Um, awesome piece of equipment for learning just how to uh, you know, do that bench press, a little more load, a little more stability around the shoulders. Um, like I said, nice easy workout, three exercises, contracting some stuff, and had a lot of fun. So grateful to be here. Uh, thanks to Mark and Chris.